Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to more AMA Motocross. This time, we come to you from Kenworthy's Motocross Park in Troy, Ohio, for the Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series round number eight. Art Eckman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs to bring you the action as the 125s are at the gate. Number six, the only single digit in 125s is Steve Lamson. Lamming, a former points leader this year, is starting to slip back as others take the momentum away from him. And the others meaning Stefan Roncata. Boy, has he been on fire, David. This guy has been amazing. I thought we would see some dominance here and there, but he's strung together three race overall wins, and that has just been something no one can touch. And a total of six moto wins in six motos. Travis Pastrana has done himself proud in his rookie year in the AMA motocross scene. Number 199 has come on strong lately. He has. He's had a few weird things happen to him, and plus a few injuries that he's been able to ride through. And it's amazing that at this point in the series, with all of his problems, he's still second in points. Four straight podiums he's coming off of, including his first national win. That was at Southwick. But it's Ron Cotta with a 41-point lead. Davey's with him now. When the 2000 motocross people started, a lot of people were watching Frenchman David Billman and Sebastian Tortelli as the main guys to beat in American motocross. However, the most dominant Frenchman this year has been 125 points leader Stefan Roncada. Stefan, six moto wins in a row coming into Kenworthy. Uh, you know, it feels, uh, it feels awesome to, uh, to be able to win, you know, uh, that many motos in a row. I feel really strong. My Yamaha is working great. And uh, Troy is my, uh, my, uh, my team's home track, so hopefully I can do as good as last year. And uh, I mean, it would, it would be great for me to go uh, to go two more models in a row, you know. But uh, I was going to try my best over there and uh, and try to win both models. Last year here at Troy, you were able to beat Ricky Carmichael on the first round. That was really the beginning of your hot streak. You won a Supercross title since then. You got that 41-point lead. What is it about this place? I I, I don't know. Tell you the truth, I don't know. Uh, a week before last year in Red Bird, I did pretty good, you know. I was coming back from my uh, from my uh, 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 injury. And uh, I did pretty good at Red Bird, and I came here, and uh, I won the first moto. I, I don't know how. I got a great start, and I won the moto, and uh, I, I was really stoked, you know, to be Ricky Carmichael here. So uh, I think since then, you know, my, my mind kind of changed a little bit, and my confidence went up, and uh, it's great. You know, it's great to be back here this year, and uh, I know I can win here, so it's a good feeling. Well, we'll see later on today if he can make his moto streak eight in a row. Stefan Roncada, 125 points leader. Taking a look at the Suzuki starting grid right now as we start with the points leader, Stefan Roncada. Second in points is Travis Pastrana. Many people expected a little bit more out of Talon Bolin with the elevation of Ricky Carmichael to the 250 division, but Talon has been consistent and been tough and could win one at any time. As can Brock Sellers, Casey Johnson getting a little stronger in the second motos now. Nicholas Way and Ernesto Fonseca really looking for breakthrough races here, as are many of the riders on this list as we follow the 125 starting grid. Brandon Jessamon, a uh, fourth at Red Bud. Paul Curry, a fifth place moto last week. And Roderick Tain, also a rider to watch here today who led four laps in the last race. Troy, Ohio, formerly a cornfield, but build it and they'll come. And they have a record crowd on hand today, but. To see the track better, let's join Davey Coombs for my favorite part of the show when he takes us around the track. There you go. Another really long stairway. You got these ruts you got to pick your way through. Up here, kind of jams up a little bit. First stadium obstacle. Over that. Tabletop. Now here's the jump you actually have to slow down for. Are you over jump? Into a bank turn, a lot of bank turns here too. You can see a blue groove on for me. Over a flat tail top. Now here's just a short little double. Then we're gonna make this corner. Another little step up. And you go into what's called the dirty dozen. Oh, tice here. Whoa. Whoa. Go far that time. Hard to get a rhythm through here. Well, at least if you're me. I'm sure Ron Connors guys have no problem here. Into this big bowl turn. They staggered up there. You can choose to go low on the outside or high up on the inside. Then a little bit of rolling wolves and what's called the Widowmaker. I'm not going to jump that. And in the back section, another big band corner. And this is a second set of jumps. 
I don't know what they call this section. They're actually a little funner, but a little harder, too. See guy little pumps over there. I thought you told him to skip the Widowmaker. He just got married, David. Oh, he's taking his chances. <laughs> Stefan Ron Connick could really help himself uh, with a good performance here today. This is his home track. It's Troy, Ohio, and it's Yamaha of Troy that he's riding for. But uh, a win here could really help him put this title chase away. We're set to go for the 125's first photo of the day. They're off and running. Sellers with an excellent start. Rod retained to the outside. Ramsey Sellers in the old front center. It looked like went down. And Casey Johnson had to ride right over his bike. Ron Cotta, not the best start. He'll be at mid-pack. And it's uh, Aloff in the lead initially. Pastrana, Lampson, and Bolden in great position, David. We've all got great starts. Sellers up in there as well. All the players except Ron Cotter out front. Lampson in second behind Aloff. He's looking to make a move right away because he's got some big guns right behind him. Tane is number 120 on the right. This 125 class is so competitive now that if you make one good move or bad one in the beginning of the race, that can really tell the story for the rest of the moto. There went Lammy. Why does he need a good performance here today to get back in the points chase? Bolin cuts it to the inside, and wham, he's off the bike. Might have been a bad decision right there. Look at all the riders going by. He crashed in that opening lap, and half the pack passes him. Lampson starting to take the lead now and pull away from Aloff as we take another look at the crash. You see Pastrana right there trying to get into the inside. Bolin gambled and doubled in. No room at all. Hits the back tire high side. He already knows he made a mistake right there. A bad choice. Aloff who has a total of only three points on the season. We'll try to hold on a second. We'll be right back with more 125 action in a moment. The Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Honda, the company that defines performance on two wheels. Performance first. And by Suzuki, makers of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. 125's Moto Number 1 from Troy, Ohio. And where there's Motocross Park, glad you could join us. Art Eckman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs. Out front, Steve Lampson. Roderick Tain trying to make a move now on Aloff. Roderick Tain has been the less heralded of the French riders to come over this year in his first full American season. But my goodness, he's made good progress. He has, and it, it hasn't been consistency, really, that's done. It's just been performances here and there. Especially Unadillo at the last event, leading as much as he did. That gives you confidence. When you get up there and run with the front runners, you start to get the feeling that you belong up there, and here he is again. He's got Pastrana breathing down his neck, but good for KTM so far. They got two of their bikes in that lead group. He had a tough time at Redbud with a 16th, but then came back with a 6th, and is certainly in much better position right now in his first moto. Lampson has not led a lap since Bud's Creek. This is the first time he's been out front. And Bud's Creek was only the fifth round, so he's anxious to get back up into the limelight and into the points chase. That's what was helping Steve in the first place. When the series got underway, he was getting excellent starts, leading the races, and he would just drift back slightly, probably because he hadn't raced in so long. But now it's time to start getting back in there, putting the heat on Roncata and Pastrana. Whoa, and that's Pastrana banging with Tane. Interesting technique right there by Pastrana coming over that triple there. He wheelied up the first one and just let his rear wheel tip the top of the next to still get over that triple. Tain to the inside on Aloff. And he makes the pass into second place, but look who's right behind him. That's the exciting Travis Pastrana. Pastrana to the inside on Aloff, and he moves into third. So he's quick changes right now. Had to muscle his way in there as well. You can see that... Lamps is starting to get away a little bit. That's who he's trying to stay ahead of in the point standings. He needs to get up there and put some pressure on him. Boy, the Yamaha Troy boys are really having their troubles here on their home track in front of the big wigs of the company. And we've got word that Ron Cott is in trouble. Let's go down to Davey. Dan, we know that Stefan had some problems. Can you tell from where you're standing what's wrong? Um, we thought maybe it was a bent shift lever, but he broke his uh, toenail right off, and he's fiddling with his boot. I'm thinking he maybe smacked his foot and had to get his boot fixed. We couldn't really tell. He's going good now, but I don't really know. I won't know until I talk to him. 
We saw you guys setting up for maybe a, a possible pit stop. Is that now off? Yeah, it's off. Well, we thought the sh shift lever was bent, but the bike seems to be fine. I think uh, I think he hurt his foot again, to be honest. Well, that could have ramifications for later on. I know. I remember you telling me, David, you rode with a broken toe one time or a broken ankle. Well, Ron Cotta may have to. If he, in fact, hurt his foot, that's why it's so important for him to string together all those wins and try to get a little cushion to deal with things like this. It inevitably happened. See how hard Pastrana landed right there? That could have been a toe into the peg, no problem. Basically a man-made track. It's the closest thing to a supercross track you'll find in the motocross scene. And Sellards is now trying to really put some heat on Pastrana. Brock Sellards, who's had a difficult time, said that after such a great points race at Supercross, it just kind of took the energy and wind right out of his sails mentally. Well, that's understandable. And, and probably the fact that he had a shot at the title at the final round and lost it. And, you know, his results here have just they've been uninspired at times. And I think you're seeing the same thing from David Pingree in that Western division. Sellards with one podium on this year. And that was a third place at Bud's Creek. He got a third in the first moto. Hole shot the second moto, but slipped the fifth. Lee McCollum giving the sign to Travis Pastrana. Pastrana, we already know that he's going to run a 250 opening up the next Supercross season at Anaheim. But will run the 125 East races. And the same will be for Stefan Roncata, who is near signing his deal with Yamaha of Troy once again. Let's just fast forward to that. Because I can't wait to see how these guys do with their first chance in the 250. It won't be for Ron Cotta, but for Travis. These guys can definitely run in there and get a win. Lampson, Tane, Pastrana, our top threes. We've got a great race underway. More coming up. We're back at Kenworthy's Farm in Troy, Ohio. 125 action, moto number one. Roderick Tane. And we asked him about the pronunciation of his name, and he said, definitely Tane. Don't pronounce the H, anybody. And we go with the way they want it said. Steve Lapson is still our leader, and Lammy's holding true. Not by much, though. Actually, Tane has started to close the gap a little bit. Here he comes, number 120 on the KTM. They say that this 125 KTM stock engine is as powerful as anything in the pits. If they ever get that suspension down, and mature riders like Tane, wow, they could be tough. Tane has been mentioned as a Frenchman. His second language, however, is German. How about that, Davey? Hey, Ryan, I, I know you work with a French rider, but that's about as English as it gets. Yeah, well, uh, his English has gotten much better, especially when we've been in the lead lately, so hopefully we'll get there. Well, speaking of that, last week at Unadilla, you guys had a great moto going the second moto, then a little problem with the bike, but I see he's put that behind him. He's all over Lampson today here at Kenworthy. Yeah, um, after, well, you know, he rode excellent both motos last weekend, and we did a lot of testing this week, and just his riding all week has been spot on. You can just see a little little fire in him, and I'm, I'm excited right now. All right, so far, so good. And listen, was he more depressed by what happened, or did that just light a fire on him? Um, I think it more or less lit a fire. He's like, you know, I got the speed. It was like the first time where he's like, I know I have the speed, so, you know, we're just waiting to see what happens. <laughs> I'm impressed right now with the pressure Tane's putting on Lampson, who I thought may be slowing, but they're actually pulling away from third right now. Tane is just up the pace. Lampson's our leader, but Tane is putting the heat on. Tane didn't qualify for the first Supercross of the year, but he finished in the top ten at all the rest. Led five laps at Houston, finishing third. Took the whole shot and led a lap at San Diego, finishing fourth. He's just showing us a lot of promise now after finishing fourth in his Supercross division. Tane to the inside. Here comes Lammy back again. Back and forth we go. KTM versus Honda. Lampson on the Works Connection Honda and Tane on the factory KTM. Tane had a good idea going to the inside. He's trying it again. See the, how rough it gets, all these ruts. The track looks pretty smooth until you see something like that. And here was Tane to the inside. Lampson had it covered. He can't keep going wide like that or they're eventually going to be able to stop in his line where he won't have the opportunity to get back to the inside. But Lampson recaptured the lead. And that's where we sit right now with Tane on his rear tire. I guarantee you Lance is starting to think about what he should be doing right now because Tane is putting that pressure on him. There's you can again. I believe it. Lampson, the veteran in 125 ranks, he has 21 125 wins. That's the third winningest 125 outdoor rider behind the record holders, of course, Mark Barnett and Ricky Carmichael. 
But uh, this is the first motocross season for Tane, and he's looking good. He first came to the United States with FMF when they had so many injuries during the 99 Supercross season. Bobby Moore at the time went to Europe and brought him over for four races. Two 19th places and a 15th at Anaheim. Now, that was his best at Anaheim 2, the 15th place. And then he came back at the end of the season to run one race for KTM. He's got a future. Lampson, Tane, Pastrana, still our top three. More 125 action from Kenworthy coming up. Our Deckman, David Bailey, Davy Coombs bringing you the action from Troy, Ohio. First moto of 125 action. Number 199, Travis Pastrana, Team Suzuki, is our leader, but Sellers is hounding him right now. Pastrana trying to take advantage. He's second in points to Stefan Roncato. Roncato hasn't broken the top ten, but look at this. Sellers bar to bar with Pastrana as they come off the double jump. Sellers comes in behind, cuts to the inside, and Sellers is our new leader. So Pastrana has led one lap, and Brock Sellers takes over. I think, I think Travis thought he was going to spend a little bit more time out there. He's been dealing with the pressure from Sellers all this time. I think he was just getting numb to it, but Sellers took advantage right there. Actually had to clip the front wheel. Travis goes a little wide right there, front end washes. Sellers across the inside, almost hits the front wheel of Travis. Good reflexes right there by Travis to not hit his back tire and make a bigger mistake and go down. Sellers is looking for a win here at Troy. He got his first motocross 125 win in AMA circles last year at Washougal. And Washougal's the next race. They got to be wondering what's going through Lamson's mind. He led this race, had a great pace, held off the early charges of Tane, and now he's watching his young kids just disappear. Here's Ron Cotta back in the pack. He's in back of uh, Greg Schnell, number 63, the privateer. He's still got a ways to go to work his way into the top 10, so imagine how much of a points boost it's going to be for Lamson and Pastrana and tear a chunk out of his points lead. For those of you just tuning in, Ron Cotta had part of his boot torn off in a confrontation and is battling to get back to mid-pack. Look how that is. When you're trying to battle through the pack like that, you got guys trying to take two or three different lines, racing with each other, and it's so hard to find a way around. Ron Cotta making the move on Kelly Smith, who hasn't done much since his win at Mount Morris. Matt Kelly has really had some tough times. Even didn't get a point out of the last race at Unadilla. Had a hard crash in the first moto that affected him in the second moto as well. Here's Schnell and Ron Cotta. They're going together. Look at that. Nick Way now has moved up into fifth place. He has one podium, but he's coming off three straight 11-place finishes overall. Nick really needs a good race. Ron Cotta had the right side in that straightaway, which has been working, and he switches back over to the left. He doesn't have long to go to try to make up points. Come out through the woods, they see the white flag. And the white flag is for this young man, number 18, Brock Sellers, who's now pulled a large lead. It's the best I've seen Sellers ride in a while. He seems aggressive. He's attacking the track, and through all these timing sections, he's getting through there better than Ron Cotta and Travis and Lampson. You know, those are the guys that usually shine at the timing, and it's Brock that sort of scrubs off speed hitting the top. This would be his first moto win here at Troy, Ohio. He took a 3-2 in last year's race. He wheelies over that bump right there at the approach. You can see behind him the lead that he's developed. That's substantial. When he can get around Lampson and Pastrana, and Pastrana is reasonably healthy right now, I'd imagine, and be able to pull a lead like that, that's huge. Sellard's best moto this year came in the first moto at Southwick, where he placed third. But then he had a 14th in the second for a sixth overall. This is the boost he needs. You know, it's such a bummer when you go out and you try your hardest and you end up in first turn crashes and having problems and working your way through the pack to third and everyone's telling you, boy, if you just had a better start or a few more laps, well now he's going to get that reward. That should change his mental outset, or his, his mindset, I should say, for the rest of the season. David, that's a gnarly looking section right in there and this is only the first of four motos. And those ruts are going to get deeper as the day goes on, so it'd be real easy to get your foot torn off if you don't have it riding around on the ball of your foot. Just one turn away. The checkers are waving, and Brock Sellers gets his first moto win of this season. 
Pastrana, something must have happened to his bike as he faded back to fourth. Roncada's not even on this board. He finished in 11th, but look at what happened to Fonseca. From last to seventh place, he had a crash in the first turn. Let's go down to Davey. Well, Brock, we are watching an incredible battle at the beginning of the moto with Lamson, Thane, and Pastrana, and man, out of nowhere, here you came, you passed them all, you got a moto win. Yeah, I was on Pastrana at the beginning, and for some reason, I just couldn't get around him. I was battling with him, out, and I made a bad mistake in the back, and he pulled a bunch, so he caught up to them guys, and it was just me back there pushing, trying to ease up on him. I finally caught him, and I don't know, my bike, my uh, Honda FMF 125 is running great out there, and can't say enough about the bike it just worked better than all the others I know that after an injury early in the year you've been trying to struggle to you've been struggling to find that rhythm and that speed you had last year and man what a great place to do it your house is about two hours from here yeah you know this is what we call my hometown track and all my friends come to see me and you know I, know, I heard them cheering me on they were going crazy out there they like Pastrana too because he's a new and up-and-comer but they were cheering me on. I just wanted to do it, you know, for myself and for everybody else. An outstanding win for Brock Sellers. Now we turn our attentions to the rivalry between Ricky Carmichael and Sebastian Tortelli. Only four points divide the two in the 250 ranks. We're back with more 250 action. First moto, Troy, Ohio. After we saw Brock Sellers win the 125 opening moto, now we've got a good battle underway for first place here for the 250s. Ricky Carmichael taking the lead away from number 14 Kevin Windham but Windham is just not letting him off the hook I like to see that usually Carmichael gets around he throws a few fast laps in the books and discourages guys but Kevin right here is attacking him no one does that much I mean occasionally Tortelli will attack Carmichael but you don't see that very often from Kevin it just might be what needs to happen to see Carmichael finally make a mistake might Carmichael be a little more cautious on this track, too, being more like a supercross track? I don't think cautious is part of Ricky's strategy right now, Art. <laughs> Let's join Davey for some more insight here with Troy. With this week's Chevy Trucks Kawasaki bike setup, we thought we'd grab Graham Broff, who does the suspension settings for Team Kawasaki. Graham, what do you have to do for the riders here at Kenworthy? Okay, for this track here at Troy in Ohio, um, it's a little tricky. It's very deceiving for a lot of riders with this track being a supercross style track with big jumps. But the one thing this track has also, which supercross tracks don't have, is a lot of fast straightaways, rough choppy conditions going into turns. So we have to set the bikes up uh, sometimes a little stiffer, sometimes a little softer, basically to provide the rider with a, a preference or a feel that he actually prefers for this track. So with three riders on the team, you're going to be pretty busy. One guy likes stiff, the other two guys might, could, might like a little harder. That, that's correct, yeah. It's going to be a, a bit of a headache for most suspension guys today. Um, like I say, it's a personal preference feel. Some of the guys like it a little stiffer for the bigger jumps, others softer for the fast straightaway. So uh, it's going to keep people uh, very busy today. Well, we'll see how Ricky Carmichael, John Down, and Larry Ward's bikes turn out. See what kind of work Graham's able to do with them here at Kenworthy. Back to the racing. Carmichael going through that gnarly section, still in the lead. Tortelli's in third, but the two of them are starting to pull a little bit away from Tortelli. There you see 21. He's got to stay in contact with those guys just for his own mental state of mind for the rest of this race. If they start to get away a little bit and start to try harder and make mistakes, then he loses more time. Mike LaRocco, Shane King, and that's Greg Albertine. Next in order, along with Tim Ferry, number 15. Well, you can hear that four-stroke KTM, can't you? 110, Shane King, currently in fifth. And through that section, that, that loamy soil, it just chops up into, like, little razor blades when it hits you. The roof just stings so bad, so you'll see these guys use different lines. They don't want to. They want to run down the fastest line, but they've got to move out of the way of the roof. Looks like Robbie Rayner. Yes, it is. Number 17, Rayner. Works his way around that berm. Beautiful. It was a little bit deep, so he just wheelied around it. That's so you can get a little more clearance from the frame and the foot peg. Takes excellent balance to do that. Greg Albertine. Got his only podium of the season at Unadilla in the last race. After a 3-4, he picked off a third overall. Here's our leader, Ricky Carmichael. Still has the edge on Kevin Windham. Maybe not the speed, but he's been able to protect his lead. Well, I'm anxious to see if, see, there's a little mistake. 
And Kevin can see that. He can sense, all right, I'm starting to get to this guy a little bit. And I've talked a million times about how Ricky can make a mistake and it doesn't seem to phase him, but when you've got guys right on your tail and you make two or three of those, it does start to phase you a little bit, and that's what Kevin's hoping for. Sometimes when he rides, you can see all of his number plates in about 10 seconds in front of you. <laughs> and the soles of his feet, <laughs> the drain plug, all, it doesn't, you know, like I said, usually it doesn't matter. He rides all hard. Listening to Ryan Hughes, who filled in for me at Unadilla last week, he talks about how much Ricky tries, how, you know, as opposed to somebody like Rayner who will back off a little bit rather than get all out of shape. The Kawasaki's, too, traditionally have done very well here at Troy. They've had seven different riders on a Kawasaki win here at Troy, Ohio, in the 250 race. Ricky trying to keep that streak alive. Look at all these Hondas. Kevin and Tortelli, then LaRocco, who have got a great start. But still, he, I've talked about this before, when he gets a good start, he's still unable to really go hard in that first couple of laps and take advantage. He was pretty much in the same position Carmichael was, but Carmichael fought his way to the lead in that opening lap. The more tempered heat and humidity here at Troy, Ohio has also led to a record crowd as you see them against the fence. And one thing about Troy, Ohio, you can see the racers on one side of the track and then it goes like a wave to the other side of the track to see the leaders. The fans have a good sight line on both sides of this track. And they realize as well, it's very flat. It's kind of tough to see you know, from one vantage point unless you run around the fact that they have all these tunnels under the big jumps so you can run around and see a lot of different sections. They've done an amazing job with a flat piece of land. There's Tim Ferry, number 15. And Ferry, under the uh, Chaparral wagon, has had a good consistent year. He comes to Detroit in the top 10. New development in the pits. Let's go to Davey Combs. Davey. Guys down here in the pits, has been a development. We just watched Craig Monte, that's David Billiman's mechanic, head back to the pits. Billiman fell on the first lap. We saw that. He just rode by with his goggles off to the mechanics area, signaling he's going back to the pits. A DNF for Billman. This is going to affect him greatly in his quest for a championship here outdoors. Well, he's going to have to play the spoiler role right now. Maybe throw the monkey wrench into the uh, title race between Tortelli and, and RC, Ricky Carmichael. He's capable of that as well. I mean, the last couple of rounds, he's a guy that can go out and win motos. He can get in there in the middle and really foul things up for one of these guys. Tortelli trying to fight his way back. Ricky Carmichael is our leader. He's making up points on the points leader. Carmichael win his second moto in a row and take the momentum and maybe the points lead away from Sebastian Tortelli. Now you see it four overall wins this year. He's also got a second place and a third place. Only the 11th at Mount Morris disrupts a, a really fine record for this young man so far in the motocross season. That's what impressed me about his second moto performance at Unadillo was because it was pretty muddy. And whenever it rains or gets muddy, they all look at Ricky like, uh-oh. <laughs> he proved everybody wrong because he wants this championship so bad. He's not going to give it up. Well, it's obvious, too. He says he doesn't like running in the rain, but it's something he has to overcome uh, to become a champion. And he's uh, hired himself a trainer, too, and is working on that upper body strength, as we see the Cannondale bike with Keith Johnson. I think Ricky wants to be thin. Whenever I talk to him, he's always asking me about training and Ironman and all that. And he, he does want to be lean, but I think what he's realizing now, that his strength is being strong, and, you know, carrying around a little bit extra, or a spare, he calls it. Doesn't seem to be slowing him down as long as he's got enough strength to go the distance. Well, does it remind you a little bit of uh, Jeff Ward? Jeff was always a little thicker. And even though he was small, he weighed a lot because he was all muscle. He had big shoulders. When you're that much shorter, you've got to make up for it in some other way, and that is just pure strength. Sebastian Tortelli trying to make the move towards second place now. No question about the skill of Sebastian Tortelli as he takes on his teammate Kevin Windham for second. Well, that's going to be a tough one because Kevin is not going to be getting orders this early in the season to move over for Sebastian, and he's going to probably have to make an aggressive pass on his teammate. It's something you don't really want to have to do, but with Carmichael out front, he doesn't have a choice. That's why several people, I think, uh, have a tendency to think that RC will have the advantage if Kevin Windham stays in the points race because there would be no team owners and. Uh, and Ricky, of course, would have two other Kawasaki's out there running for him. He would, and that would definitely help. And the thing that's really a bummer for t Sebastian right now is the fact that Kevin keeps getting the whole shot every week. So he's always got to find his way around him and up to Carmine. 
Mike LaRocco now starting to put the heat from uh, behind on uh, Sebastian Tortelli. Yeah, Sebastian, the something's not right. Oh! Oh, LaRocco skids out. That's a slick piece of ground right there, and as you go up over the top of that rise, the front wheel gets light. Sebastian actually, it looked like his front end was just about to wash out, and then he hit the berm and it saved him, but not as lucky for LaRocco. Another bad break from Mike, who's come from 12th in the points race to 6th coming into Troy, so he's gradually advancing. Here's another look. Watch Tortelli's front wheel. It's going to wash slightly as it washes completely out for LaRocco. You see how out of shape Tortelli got as LaRocco slides to a stop, safe. <laughs> and the flagger wasn't paying any attention right there. Luckily, it wasn't a blind spot, but he didn't even see it. Here's our leader, Ricky Carmichael, number four on the team Kawasaki. If these positions remain the same, Ricky Carmichael would go into the second moto with a one-point lead in the points race. He's coming off a great second moto at Unadilla. Man, I, I tell you, I was just focusing on that on that start. All, it's all I wanted was a whole shot and uh, try to get back in the points lead. And uh, I didn't take my hot lap and didn't get my bike all wet and muddy or my tires stayed nice and dry. And uh, I just rocketed out of that gate, and like you said, I got an awesome hole shot. It was I couldn't I don't even think I could hear anybody. It was it was great. I don't even think I've had a hole shot. I've pulled one like that. It was it was awesome. Well, he pulled an awesome hole shot in that second moto at Unadilla, but he's pulling an awesome race right now as he just left everybody else behind. And Kevin Wyndham was giving him good push there for a while. David. I think Kevin did all that he could, and Ricky made a few little mistakes, and it looked like it might. Kind of give in to the pressure, but he didn't. He started to pull away. That broke the spirit of Kevin. Now Kevin thinking probably more about Tortelli than he is about trying to get the lead. Albertine, who came off a 3-4 at Unadilla, is trying to pull up on Tim Ferry, number 15. Look at the air time these guys get off that jump. It's a big double over a plateau. When you fly the whole thing, it's got to be about 65 or 70 feet. For Ferry, this fifth place could be his second best moto of the year. I really thought we'd see a little bit more from Tim Ferry in this outdoor season. You know, remember, he led a little bit of Phoenix this year in the Supercross. I mean, the guy's got talent, plenty of it. I just don't think his results are really reflecting the talent that he has. And next year will be a whole different story. That's a fact. As Chaparral says, they're not going to field a team. And it is rumored that Jeremy McGrath, of course, will have his own team. It's also been rumored that he signed a $1 million salary contract with Yamaha to ride Yamaha bikes. That's all? Not counting endorsements. Oh, okay. That's about what you made. Huh? No, not even so. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> Jeremy has earned it. You yes, know, he has. I've talked about that in the latest story I wrote for Racer X. Jeremy has done so much to raise the awareness of motocross, being on Jay Leno, uh, you know, attracting new fans, talking to kids, signing autographs as long as anybody else, and, and helping all of his sponsors break sales records. I understand they're talking with Kellogg's cereals as well for an outside sponsor for Jeremy McGrath that he's made, uh, creating new guidelines off the track as well as on the track. Well, he should be paid for that. As long as he comes back out and wins again, it'll definitely be worth it. Even if he doesn't, I'm sure Jeremy's going to put up a fight for the title. Ralbertine found his way around Ferry. I didn't think he was going to do it. Here's, here's what happened. Ferry goes to the inside. Can't quite get on the gas as early. You can see how aggressive that Albertine was to the outside. It out jumps him. Picks up the spot. Albertine, of course, discouraged with injuries this year. He came back from the broken femur during the uh, Supercross season. Was in pretty good shape. Then the second race of the year, got a knee problem at Hangtown. Here comes Ferry right back again. Well, that shows me a little something with Tim Ferry. And he was smart right there. He knew Albertine was going to try to cut inside of him, so he just kind of slow poked it a little bit across the inside to ruin the idea of Albertine. Then he made a mistake. Couldn't make it even a try -out. Our Suzuki trivia question. Which current 250 rider won a 125 overall here at Troy back in 94? The answer coming up. Welcome back to the Kenworthy Farm in Troy, Ohio. Ricky Carmichael leading our first 250 moto. Let's take a look at the answer of our Suzuki trivia question. Which current 250 rider won a 125 overall at Troy? It was Damon Huffman back in 1994. If I'm not mistaken, he won two races that year in the motocross season. Ricky Carmichael, though, right now is gunning for his fifth victory of the season. You see Kevin back there 
Ricky's looking over to his left at a portion of the racetrack to see what kind of lead he had. It's not as big as it was. Kevin and Tortelli have up the pace. So even though he's winding down this moto, he's got to stay on top of it and make good decisions through all the lapped riders. 15 motos this year. This would be his eighth win in 15 motos. Impressive. Yeah, that's pretty dominant. You know, in talking to him before the season started, outdoors that is, he was saying, man, I, I'm going to kill those guys outdoors. I want to win that. I know I can. There's no reason why I can't. And here he is, looking like he may pick up the points lead after this moto. Well, if he wins today, you know he's going to surpass you on the all-time win list. That's true. I figured it would happen sooner or later. You know, he, he keeps saying, well, I don't know if anyone else is going to come along and equal all those records. And someone always does. 30 wins for David Bailey, and here's the victory, the checkered flag for Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael, with this win, takes a one-point lead in the series over Sebastian Tortelli as Tortelli taking a third in the moto. His teammate, Kevin Windham, finishing right in front of him as we take a look at the standings of our first moto for the 250s. Mike LaRocco, Tim Ferry rounding out the top five. Time now to go down to Davey Coombs, talking with our winner. Ricky, that was a good moto for you. Not only did you get the win, but you got the points lead, too. You're a point up on Tortelli. Yeah, it's good, Davey. I tell you, it was awesome, me and Kevin out there, like uh, like old days on 125s. Uh, got a great start. My Chevy Trucks Kawasaki Fridge Zone Tires was hooking up out of the gate. I'm getting good starts, and uh, that's what it's going to take for this championship. And uh, Kevin was hounding me there for a while, and uh, I was able to gap him a little bit, and... Uh, just held my own lead and I hit my stomach. I kind of got a little bit of a stomach ache, but uh, I'm gonna try to regroup and uh, try to win. When we come here to Kenworthy, a lot of times it's just hot as can be. Not too hot today. How'd you feel at the end of the moto? Oh, I felt great at the end of the moto other than my stomach was bothering me, but uh, you know, I'm in good shape and uh, I've been working hard and uh, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm giving it all for this championship. Good job, Rick. Thanks a lot, Davey. Ricky Carmichael taking over the points lead, and he was actually helped by Kevin Windham, a teammate of Sebastian Tortelli. Kevin Windham placing in between the two for second place in the moto. Let's go back down to Davey now, who's uh, with Kevin. Well, Kevin, Ricky said that seemed like old times. You guys are on the 125s up there, one and two, way out in front of the field. Yeah, it felt good to be up there for a change. I've uh, been, been fighting a little bit lately, and... Uh... Got off to a good start, and still the middle part of my race was, was the worst part. Uh, towards the end, I came on strong. I feel great right now, and uh, hopefully I can come out and just improve just that one little spot for the second moto. Well, we've seen all year long you're a stronger rider in the second moto. You tend to pump up at the beginning, but now you got this moto under your belt, and you know you're on the speed as Ricky. Maybe you get in the next moto? I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's, uh, Ricky's a, a great competitor, and uh, Sebastian, too. You know, they're going for the championship pretty tight. I want to get up there with those guys, so uh, the only way I'm going to be able to do that is to start beating them. They, they've been really consistent, and uh, you know, I definitely feel like my sponsors are there and, and can get me there. I'd like to thank Honda and Dunlop, 1-800 Collect, No Fear, Raya Helmets, uh, Scott Goggles, Alpine Star Boots, and Cornwall Tools. We have word that Sebastian Tortelli, despite taking third, did it with gritted teeth and some uh, serious ramifications maybe in the future. Let's check in with uh, Davey Combs to see what it might be. Well, unfortunately, I don't have our third place rider, Tortelli. He came into the finish line area, pulled off for a second, stalled his bike, and could not get his foot down on the ground. Apparently, he's turned his ankle. In fact, it was so bad, I had to start his bike for him so he could ride back to the pit area. We'll try and find out what's going on for the start of the second moto, but this might throw a big wrench and a bad wrench in the plans of Honda for this outdoor championship and in their battle with Ricky Carmichael. So after the opening motos in the 250 and the 125s, it's been a tough day for the French. Sebastian Tortelli, it appears, is injured. Whether he'll be able to come back for the second moto, we do not know. But he loses the points lead by at least one point after the opening moto in the victory for Ricky Carmichael. On the other hand, in the 125s, the dominant points leader, Stefan Roncata, a Frenchman, placed in 11th spot and lost a lot of points as Brock Sellers went on to victory. The 125 second moto is next. The Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. Right now the 125s are out on the track uh, taking a last look at it before they go back to the gate and get things underway. And it's a good opportunity for us to take a look at our Suzuki flashback. 
This past West Coast Supercross season, Suzuki's David Pingree finished second, only two points behind Shea Bentley in one of the most exciting championships on record. Well, the season started out great, you know. I won the first race. Uh, the Suzuki was working great for me. And, uh, and the next to last round at Minneapolis, got in a wreck with someone who had already crashed. I hit him, bent my front brake carrier, so my front wheel kept locking up. And uh, I could only manage like a 15th or something horrible. And uh, lost the points lead. And at the last round, everybody crashed in the first turn. And I uh, came back all the way to second, but just wasn't enough. Two points short of the championship, so it's disappointing. Ping's downfall was his starts, as the 25-year-old crashed in the first turn in five of eight rounds. However, none was more costly than the crash at the second round. Yeah, that was probably the worst, you know. Uh, I think it was just nerves. I don't blame Casey Lytle, but at the second Anaheim, we both came in. We were, I was maybe a half a foot ahead of him, but uh, he had the inside, and he didn't want to let off, so we both left it on right up until the, you know, the turn was basically there. And uh, he bumped me, and we both blew right off the track. Through that first turn with Casey Lytle was probably the downward spiral the start of it all for my whole season but despite falling short of his quest Pingree remains one of the sports rising superstars certainly looking forward to the 2001 season my goal is to just take all that I learned last year and uh, and, I, and I did learn a lot you know that's the first time I had ever been actually in the hunt for a championship the whole season and uh, I'm just gonna use that in 2001 and go out there and try and get it done so Pingree trying to come back here for the second moto, 125s. That board goes sideways. We'll have five to ten seconds before the gate drops. Can Brock Sellers possibly get a 1-1 sweep for his first victory of the season? We're ready to go. They're revving up. The 125s are underway for moto number two, and Pingree gets a great start. They come through the grass onto the dirt. Pingree gets the whole shot. There's Schnell, number 62. Jessamine a good start. Ramsey Curry is also out there. Number 44 is Jessamine. Jessamine moves into the lead on Pingree. Pingree number 35. Boy, lots of congestion coming through there. There's Ron Cotter, number 26. He is at mid-pack once again. Another poor start for the points leader. Look out. Where's Pastrana? Lampson is buried back in the pack as well. Jessamine number 44. Is he looking for a good race? Yes, he is. So is Pingree, number 35 on the Suzuki right behind him. Roderick Tane also in the act. This is the second moto in the row. Roderick Tane has had a good start. He's the only guy up there. A little mistake by Pingree back there. They watered the track slightly. These guys are getting some wheel spin. Can't get to their clean. Can Jessamine hold on? We'll be right back with 125 action. We're back at Troy, Ohio. Second moto of the 125s and Roderick Tane. David is the only name up front that we recognize from the first moto as Jessamine has surprised everyone. Now, Tane's probably mixed up thinking that's his board. He's got Ucan out there on it, so <laughs> some of the mechanics are stealing material. Our Suzuki stopwatch, let's check and see. Five seconds back is Sellers. There's Curry. Ron Cotta looked like he was 10.5 seconds back of the leader. I didn't see Pastrana, did you, David? No, he's still back in the pack. Brandon Jessamine, our leader. Let's check in with Davey Combs now down in the mechanics area. Well, it's about time you guys got a good start. Yeah, it feels really good. He got out there really nice. The first moto, he had a really terrible start. Went from 39th all the way up to 8th, so he's riding really, really good. We saw Brandon have a good day at Redbud, too. A couple of good starts there as well, but this is his first hole shot probably since Millville last year. Yeah, it is his first hole shot for a long time, but uh, I think he'll stay right up there. I hope so. Thanks a lot, Davey. Jessamine and Tane battling it out for the lead here in our second motor for the 125. Tane tries to get momentum. Jessamine has the angle. This time that Tane's able to close the gap a little bit, Jessamine is real smart to just sense where he is, move over slightly. He's not riding dirty. He's protecting his line. He's the one in the lead who controls the racetrack. Using that track. He had a 4-5, fourth overall at Redbud. He's trying now for his first moto of his season this year. He's going to have to put together the best ride of his life because look at the talent stacked up behind him. Sellers, who dominated that first moto, passed everybody. There's Pingree, number 35. And Fonseca, Fonseca to the inside, makes the pass on Pingree. So Fonseca now tries to make a move on Brock Sellers. The yellow flag is out, one of the lappers going down. 
They're tending him to the uh, side of the track now as uh, Brock Sellers has got his hands full. Sellers in third place. There is a gap between this bunch and the leaders. Let's go to Davey. Kenny, you guys started out with a tough day when Ernesto fell in the first turn, but I watched him come all the way back up to seventh in the first moto. Now you got a top ten start, and he's working on third. Yeah, um, the first moto we were doing consistent laps, staying at 230s, and seemed like he was gaining the whole moto. Now uh, we got a decent start, and we're doing through 30s again, so I uh, hope the you can look ahead and maybe catch some winners. I know that Ernesto obviously is a very accomplished supercross rider, and this year we've seen him develop more into an outdoor rider. This track's tailor-made for him. Yeah, he, he's pretty happy when we come here. He likes this track a lot. Good luck. Well, he came from a long way back in that first moto, David, after uh, going down in the first turn. He came back to the seventh place. Darn near everybody passed him. He likes the Supercross style stuff. Anything that requires a little bit more timing, more jumps, a little bit more fun to ride. Nobody just likes to go out and ride around a track unless it's got something on it where you can get a little bit of air. And it seems to suit him well. He came out of that corner before the tunnel jump with a good line. I expect to see him being able to pass through there in the laps to come. The battle for third. Fonseca now got a good angle on Brock Sellard. Sellard's the winner of the first moto. Drops back into fourth. And now Sellers comes back again, and they hook up. My goodness. Pingree moves right by him. Sellers remounts quickly. Brandis came by and clipped handlebars with Fonseca, and there's Ron Cotta getting into the mix. So check this out. I thought Fonseca had the pass made, but Sellers is not giving up. He jumped back in there to the inside. Their bikes got stuck. And just as he gets going... Watch Brandis lock bars. He just about goes down, and Ron Cotta jumps up to the inside. So this is getting tight. So Ron Cotta, though, moving up. And with Pastrana having his problems, we got word that it was a five-cent part that broke on his bike in the first moto when he was up with the lead pack. And now he's having problems once again. So Ron Cotta has a chance to pick up some points. There's number 26. Stefan Roncata fights his way back as Brandon Jessamine continues to lead with Tain in second. Angry and Sellers in good position, but no Pastrana. Loudon Motorsports is proud to announce that they now feature Suzuki motorcycles and ATVs. They have great products. They have wonderful on off road bikes. They've got great four wheelers that are perfect for. Anything and everything you need to do around the farm or just playing. Expanding the business, Loudon Motorsports now carries all the Suzuki Cruisers, sport bikes, motocross bikes, dirt bikes, and all-terrain vehicles. You've got to visit the showroom with all the flashy 2000 model Suzukis, including the GSXR 750 sport bike. Visit Loudon Motorsports and Power Equipment in Leesburg on Catoctin Circle. Welcome back to Kenworthy's Farm in Troy, Ohio. The second moto's been exciting so far here with the 125s. Brock Sellards is looking for an overall finish after winning the first moto, but uh, the big news is number 26, Stefan Roncata getting back in the act. After an 11th place finish in the first moto, Pastrana was able to pick up a few points. Yeah, Roncata just skating across that inside. It's so hard to hold it as tight as he did when he was on the power so hard. And he's able to go a little bit different line than some of the other riders, which Probably why he's able to move his way through the pack so well. Ron got us so fast. And he's working on Pingree now, number 35. Pingree goes down and Ron Cotta goes down. Oh, what an unfortunate situation for Ron Cotta. Being behind Pingree when he hit the deck. Ron Cotta up and running once again, but he was passed by all three or four riders. That was a weird crash. It just seemed like he was following Pingree out of the corner. Let's see what happens. He hits his rear wheel, and that causes Pingree to go down, and Stefan had nowhere to go. Well, Ramsey just barely got around him. Right there. Tags his rear wheel while Pingree's front end still wasn't sorted out. It shoved him. It just shoved him to the ground. Pingree's got to be sitting there going, what did I do? <laughs> yeah. That was weird. Well, still, Roncata's in front of uh, Pastrana, however. As we look at Nathan Ramsey... And number 27, Michael Brandis. Oh, this is going to get good now. You got Lampson and There's Bowen Bowen. going yes. at it. You just never know with this class. There's so three or four guys can go down, can DNF, can just stay in the pits, and you're going to have more guys fill in the show. Bowen, 7 11. 
And Lampson now starting to get in the act. Lampson, he won, he's won twice here at Troy, Ohio during his championship years in the 125. Michael Brandis trying to fight through a very tough injury riddled here. Doing a good job to hold off Boland right now. They're coming into the tough timing section. There goes Ramsey through, no problem. Look at Lampson to the inside of Boland. Oh, that's a good matchup. The two veteran riders. Boland trying to get by Brandis to the outside. Can't quite get it that time. And Lampson takes the inside route. And Boland's in a tough spot because if he tries anything to get around Brandis, he opens the door for Lampson. Oh, he made the good move there. Talon Bolin, Brandis bar to bar for a while as they go over the doubles. This time Lampson down the right side of that straightaway. You can see how much faster it is. Gets by Brandis, no problem. Stays on the heels of Bolin. It looks to me like Bolin's got ideas about getting to the front. If Lampson can stay with him and match his pace, he'll pick up a lot of points here. That was a good move by Bolin. It was, just sheer aggression. I don't think he really planned it. He just gassed it and hoped. There's Lampson now moving him back of Bolin as all three get in front of Michael Brandis. Tane is being challenged now by Brock Sellards for second place. Sellards, good chance for that overall. I'm impressed with how hard Sellards charges into the corner. I don't think Sellards has a sweep in his career. And Sellards makes the move into second place. Look easy. Now he just charges into the corner so much. And if he's got a 20-foot gap, he closes it up. No problem. Now he's got Jessamine, who's never won a moto. He may be a little nervous out there trying to defend it after Sellers won the first one. He's got that intimidation. Look at him down the inside right here. Just a little bit better timing than Tane. Able to set it right down the downside, jump to the inside, foot out, ready for the corner. Brock Sellers in second, not that far away from Brandon Jessamine in first. Would that be a redeemer on a rather average season up to this point if Sellers could sweep it and gain his first victory of the season? We'll find out what happens coming up next. Well, it's been a long time since we've seen anyone but Stefan Roncata out in front of the 125s here for the outdoor season. But here today, we've had Brock Sellers win the first moto. And right now, Brock Sellers is chasing another surprise, Brandon Jessamine for first place in the second moto. Sellers is wasting no time after getting into second place in attacking for the lead. The crowd is cheering. They're seeing a good battle now. Sellers. Bar to bar, but Jessamine just edges him out of the corner. Jessamine has not made that big mistake yet. He's using up the track, too, David. He knows he's got Sellers to the inside, not wise. He needs to cover that line. And he didn't. And Sellers will have the advantage going into that right turn. The current leader now is Brock Sellers. Jessamine just got hung out there. You can see him looking over to his right. He knew where Sellers was. He really needed to move over, but see all those ruts and those jumps? Easier said than done. He was committed to that outside. It didn't work at the final corner, but hey, hats off to Jessamine for leading the moto as long as he did and for putting up that much of a fight on a guy that's definitely got this track figured out today. Fonseca, number 28, trying to move up the, the ranks there with Nathan Ramsey in front of him of Split Fire Pro Circuit. Roderick Tain, number 120, looking for the best finish overall-wise of the season. If he can hold on to that number three position. Hey, these guys are going around that right-hand sweeper faster and faster every lap. Here comes Fonseca. Fonseca gets the edge. Can he take both of them on the same move? No, Tain just accelerated in front. That was impressive. It looked like Fonseca was going to get them both. Roderick Tain just hung right in there and opened up the throttle. What a great moto. There's been so many battles, clusters of battles, not just a couple of guys, but four or five at a time. Well, these fans have got to be proud to be wearing KTM-type garb because they've uh, made their mark now in the 125s. Roderick Tain, number 120 on the KTM, still holding off Ernesto Fonseca, Yamaha of Troy. 
That's where that KTM really hooks up. They call that straightaway the Autobahn. They've named everything out here. And on that straightaway, that KTM really seems to hook up. But look at that. Beautiful oh, technique. Great leap by Fonseca. Fonseca looking back, trying to protect his line now. That's street basketball talking right there. Jumps over the main groove. As soon as he drops over this, he squares it off, gives it a little clutch, sits down, and seed hops that to get a little extra, a little extra height. All the way over that triple from the inside, then looks back at Tane over the tunnel jump going, yep, that's how you do it. And all of a sudden, Tane drops to fifth as Ramsey gets in front of him. So it's Sellers, Jessamine, Fonseca, and Ramsey, the top four, with Tane dropping to fifth. And there goes Ramsey down. Very similar situation that we saw with Pingree and Roncata. He just jumped in there. He had the wrong timing at the very end, hit the back tire. He knew he was going to hit the back tire. And you can see it's just as important at times to know how to crash. If that was anybody else, it could have been a wrist or a shoulder injury, but he just tucks and gets right back to the bike the whole time, keeping the eye on the traffic coming. Our leader, number 18, Brock Sellers. This could be FMF's first victory of the season, and it could be their last as a Honda support team if they don't win any more this year because it's been said that Honda is thinking about going another direction for their 125 support team next year. Sellard's already starting to salute the fans. This has got to feel so good to get a sweep. He's definitely got the talent to go out there and win. It's got to be frustrating to get all those thirds, fourths, and fifths. This should change his mindset for the rest of the season. This will be the first sweep of his young career. He's got one more year on his contract with Team Honda. So regardless if there's an FMF team next year, Honda will be placing Brock Sellard somewhere, maybe under the Big Ten. That would be a big boost of confidence. The checkered flag for Brock Sellards. Boy, what a celebration he's going to have tonight. His first sweep, his first win of the season, his second win in his career. Brandon Jessamine in second. Good ride for Brandon. He's going to be happy as well lead that moto that long and stay in the hunt hold everybody else off and nobody could stay in front of sellers today so i think jessamine did a fine job in the second moto i can remember a time when jessamine was too tired to ride the second moto here because it was so hot absolutely and with brandon jessamine's second place that'll put him on the podium with a third overall fonseca a fine moto in third so we've had some pleasant surprises here in our second moto but the big news, a sweep by Sellers. Well, Brock, when you say you're ready to get back on track, you mean business. What a great day today. 1-1. One, one. You did it from behind both times in front of your hometown crowd. Yeah, I couldn't ask for much better. It's uh, more of a challenge coming from behind. Uh, them guys were riding really fast at the beginning, and me and Ernie about hit. He passed me once in a dirty dozen. I mean, I was sideways. We came into it, and I, I went for the pass back in, and he didn't let off. And we both crashed, and I thought I was in trouble after that. I couldn't get my bike up because we were stuck, but I got back rolling. I ended up catching up and uh, getting the win. I couldn't, can't say enough. You know, my bike's running great. FMF Honda, they're doing a great job on my bike, getting things set up for me. And I don't know, it just feels like a whole different Brock Sellers out there. So I'm just really excited. I'll tell you what, it looks like the Brock Sellers we saw last year at Washougal, and that's a week away. Now you go back to a track you've known you can win at. You got four races left. Can you get back in this championship chase? You know, I, I hope so. I don't know what uh, everyone finished out there, but I'm, I'm going to die trying. I, I'm feeling real confident now, and uh, this is what I needed. I mean, it, it struggles getting seconds. You lose confidence getting seconds, thirds, and, you know, crashing. And to go out here and get a 1-1 in front of my hometown, you know, that's a big confidence booster. So Sillard's picking off the the big trophy. Steve Lampson getting a second place. Jessamyn his first podium. But look at Travis Pastrani in seventh and Stefan Wankat in tenth. Let's go back to Davey. Brandon, what an impressive ride. First of all, you finally got a good start. And then that whole moto, you're pretty much in control. You have to feel good about that. Yes, I mean, it's the first time this, well, actually the second time this season, I got a really good start. My Suzuki pulled me out there. I just stayed at a comfortable pace for me. Brock got around me. He was riding really good. So I'm just happy to be up here on the podium for the first time. I was watching in the first moto. It looked like you had some trouble on the first turn. You came from dead last. You got in the top 10. Did that inspire you for the second moto? Oh, yes, definitely. You know, the first moto, I got a horrible start, like 39th. Came up to 8th. I rode really good, but you got to start with these guys around with them. 
You proved that here in the second moto. Now you got four races to go in this series. The last two races, you've been in the top five overall. I'm sorry, the exception you're going to do. Red button here, top five overall. What do you want to do in these last four races? I would really like to get a moto win. I know I could do it. I almost had it today, but I'm going to, my goal before the end of the season, get a moto win and put my Suzuki up top. On the Suzuki standings, Ron Cotta with an 11 11 loses only six points to Pastrana. A tough day for Travis Pastrana as well. Lammy only one point in back of the team Suzuki rider. Well, David Villeman had a real tough time of it in the first 250 moto, but he seems to be playful enough. We'll be right back. Between motos, I ran back to the Honda pits to check on Sebastian Tortelli. Like I told you, after the first moto, he's having problems with his ankles. Well, he laid down the whole time in the back of the truck. They got some ice on his right leg. He's certainly going to make a go of it. But right now, he's lost the points lead. The object is to not to lose too much ground on Carmichael, who won the first moto. Right now, he's a point behind. One of the Honda people told me if they can get out of here less than six points behind, they'll be pretty happy. Boy, what an unfortunate situation for Tortelli, but what a great situation for number four, David. I'm sure you found yourself in those positions where your opponents have been injured, but uh, sometimes you just can't take that for granted. I've been in both places, and I, I remember being in the back of my truck when Johnson was riding for Yamaha and hearing that he's over there, doubled over, having stomach cramps or whatever. I'm thinking, yeah, that's all I need. And then he'd win the second moto. I'd be like, wait, <laughs> where the heck am I getting this information? The 250s at the gate now with the 32nd board up. It goes sideways, and they'll start revving those engines for our second moto of the 250s here at Troy, Ohio. A great win for Ricky Carmichael in the first moto. Here's Tortelli with that sore ankle or foot next to Kevin Windham, who did him no favors in the first moto. And there's Carmichael. Let's watch him as they're off foot running. Carmichael with a good start. Carmichael with a great start. He'll get the whole shot. A good clean first turn anyway as Carmichael comes out of it on top. Shane King in third. A big red Honda right behind Ricky Carmichael. And it looks like Kevin Windham. Uh-oh, trouble for Albertine. And number 982 is Akira Narita. He's uh, gone this whole series. Japanese rider. Having his problems with Albertine. Ricky Carmichael out on top. Kevin Windham, 1-2, just like before. Well, I suppose Kevin knows now that just keeping a little bit of pressure isn't enough on Carmichael. And David Philman goes down. Looks like a Suzuki there in front of him. I can't see who it is right now. It's Ted Campbell, number 96. Okay. So all kinds of action as this track just seems to reach up and grab the riders. Carmichael's got to be feeling pretty good, knowing that he was able to outlast Kevin in that first moto. He should be able to do the same thing again. He knows that Tortelli's not 100%, so who the heck else is out there that can run him down? Another thing is, it's not that hot here at Troy, Ohio, and the humidity is down from years past. So they, that's even got to give him more of a boost psychologically that he doesn't have to deal with that heavy humidity. Kevin Windham, though, looking for opportunity right now. Ooh, he's on the go. Great shot. Bar to bar we go. Kevin Windham moves out in front. Ricky Carmichael comes back. That's what Kevin's got to do. He's got to keep the pressure on. Let him know. I mean, the more pressure, the better. Ricky Carmichael and Windham go at it. Davey. Well, we know that Sebastian Tortelli's out there riding in pain. He is riding in the top five. That's much better than two of the other former GP contenders throwing zero on the first lap. Greg Albertine fell in that second turn, could not get the bike started. It looked like it was flooded. Finally, his mechanic, Joe Maurer, had to jump up and start it. And David Billiman, who being up the first moto for well, the fresh wing off to another bad lap, he crashed in the back. It looks like this is going to be his most disastrous day as a professional racer in America. Yeah, tough day for Billiman, that's for sure. His worst day prior was at Southwick with a 10th when he had a, a DNF and the first moto came back for a third. But that was a clutch problem in the first moto, David. It's nothing like going down and experiencing the, what he's done here today. Shane King getting harassment now from Sebastian Tortelli. And you've got to give this young man credit. Absolutely. And you're talking about a guy that wasn't sure if he was going to ride the second moto or not. There he makes the pass. I should move him up into fourth. I mean, the question's been answered. Tortelli can ride in pain, and just like Carmichael, 
He's just going to do whatever it takes to win this championship. Well, the word has just been sent down that uh, Sebastian Tortelli not only got his uh, ankle or foot taken off the pegs once, but twice in that first moto. Well, each time he heads into these jumps that are just filled with ruts, he's got to be right on the toe of his foot on that foot peg. Imagine if you just compress into one of those ruts right there, the, the bike gets real close to the ground, and if your toe's hanging over the front of the foot peg, he's going to grab it again. Boy, he might have trouble getting his boot off after this uh, second moto. Sebastian Tortelli, though, hanging in there. He's in fourth behind Mike Morocco in third. But it's Ricky Carmichael leading everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Troy, Ohio. Second moto, 250s. Ricky Carmichael is our leader, but right now the battle is for sixth place. You got the privateer, number 33, Heath Voss. There's Robbie Raynard, number 17, trying to get into the act. Brandon has been kind of hot and cold this year. He's had some outstanding performances, but he's also had some miserable days. He needs to get Ryan Hughes as a coach. <laughs> I was watching the show last week when he kind of just didn't put up much of a fight when Carmichael got by, and Ryan let him have it. And, you know, Ryan's right. You need to see a guy like with the talent of Rainer try a little bit harder. The guy should be up there battling for the lead, not with these guys. Number 16, John Dowd, and Rainer is going after Dowd right now. And he moves into seven. So Robbie Raynard moving up the ladder. There's Larry Ward, number 10, and Tim Ferry, number 15. So it's Raynard taking on Voss right now. What a ride for Voss. I mean, look at the talent he's got back there behind him, all factory riders. He's smoking them so far. Well, this could be Voss's uh, finest overall performance if he hangs in there tough. Inside move, Raynard. Look at that kind of stuff. I mean, just standing up. He snuck right in there and already opens up the gap, pulls a tear away, just flicks the back end over a little bit so he lands where he wants. The guy's unbelievable. It's just amazing that you don't see a little bit more of that. Tim Ferry this time now in the battle with Voss. And the two Kawasaki riders dueling with each other, Larry Ward and John Dowd. It's Ward getting in front of Dowdy. Dowdy's had a difficult season this year. Well, I think there was an you know, adjustment process and then a few injuries. Look at that. Ferry right there. Dyson with Raynard. Raynard gets the best of that battle. There's the leading privateer going through the uh, shot. Number 112, that's Kyle Lewis on a Suzuki. But Robbie Raynard now in front of Tim Ferry. Robbie Raynard certainly showing his uh, talent at Southwick where he led one race for seven laps and took a second in the first moto and a well-deserved fourth in the second moto for a third overall but that's been the, the lone highlight really for Robbie this year like I always say there's always Millville <laughs> you know he's gonna go fast there and Ferry doing a great job of fighting back get back ahead of him these guys are duking it out and starting to pull away from that other group it's one great thing about this sport uh, regardless of who's out in front and battling for the points there's always these races back through the entire field that make it really fun for these riders. Shane King in fifth spot now behind Tortelli. Mike LaRocco holding on to third. John Dowd rounding out that top ten. Damian Plotz, another fine performance for that uh, privateer. And look at that. Did you see that? David Villeman in 16. That's just ugly. And I think he's pretty much given up on the idea that he can still win this championship. That's gone now. And it hasn't entirely been his fault. He's had a little bit of bad luck with bike problems. And I'll tell you what, he's got more respect for Carmichael and Tortelli now than he did at the start of the season. And sometimes that's what you need. You need to get a little slap, a little dose of reality, realize how much talent you're up against because things went well for him in the Supercross. He needs to attack the outdoors with a little bit more aggression and probably a little bit more respect for some of these guys that have been doing it for a while. So will it all? Tortelli went down. No, he's got to be in pain, David. That's too bad. You know, the last year the, the season pretty much ended with him injured, and I just hate to see that be the reason that he can't win this championship or at least have a shot at it. And Ricky Carmichael is just breezing along, and Ricky's looking for another sweep. He can't breeze a whole lot because, once again, Kevin Windham has not entirely let him off the hook. 
I mean, Carmichael has got to fly through berms like that for the rest of this race. Otherwise, you see Kevin is right, right. there. He's about three seconds behind. Rocco's not that far behind those two, and you know what happens to LaRocco at the end of the race. He, he just picks gets it up. tougher and tougher all the way, doesn't he? That's kind of a neat way to win in that corner, too. I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> but standing up on a wheelie through some... I don't even know how he did that, really, but it was slick. That's why he's going so fast. It's also rumored that LaRocco has already re-signed with Honda. He has a contract with Honda and his own team, Amsoil Honda. Looks like that'll be back around. In fact, Amsoil Honda might have a, a bigger working relationship with uh, the factory Honda team. One of the big assets for having LaRocco around is his ability to test. I've seen him test out the Honda track, tires and everything. And You know, the guy is so consistent out there. and He's got such a good feel for things. It really helps the rest of the team. Our Suzuki stopwatch had him about six seconds behind the leader, Ricky Carmichael. But anything can happen here in the waning moments of our second moto of 250 action. And look at the long drought of riders after still, Morocco. Still no Tortelli. Looks like Tortelli's wife out there giving him some encouragement now as number 21 finally comes around. And Tim Ferry, number 15, trying to pick up a spot. Looking ahead on our Chevy Trucks AMA motocross schedule after Washougal, it's Millville, Binghamton, and Delmont. We're back with 250 action now as Tim Ferry and Sebastian Tortelli are going at it. As we explained earlier in the moto, Sebastian Tortelli has had all kinds of injury problems with that ankle. He tweaked it twice in the first moto, and he's been down here in the second moto. He looks back to see where Tim Ferry is. He's losing valuable points now as Ferry goes bar to bar with him and makes the pass. Coming back is Tortelli. He is tough. He is very tough, but Ferry is in uh, right now better physical condition. I don't mean uh, working out wise. I mean that uh, Tortelli has been battered in this moto. He's still fighting. He knows those are points that could make the difference in the championship. Now, see, he was trying to square off Ferry right here. He has the option to cut underneath him and go to the inside. He thought Ferry might guess that way, so he figured I'll go wide, but Ferry had the inside and controlled it perfect. And then Tortelli, he could have been a little overzealous right there and clipped the back wheel of Ferry and gone down, but he was smart, realized, well, Barry knows what I'm doing. I better just put on the brakes a little bit and play it safe. Carmichael still has the handle on first place, but Wyndham not far back. Carmichael cannot afford a mistake. But right here is where the best racing is. And what a shot looking right into the eyes almost of Tim Ferry. Just smokes around that berm right there. Great balance. I'll tell you what, if you were to go out and watch Tim Ferry ride, just practice, or to watch him in any practice session at the National, you'd think, man, this guy can win. You know, so I, I talked about it in the first moto. The, the results don't show the talent this guy has, and I hope he gets an opportunity next year to go out and show what he can do. Ferry, his best performance overall this year was at Bud's Creek with a fifth. He went 5-5 in that one. Well, he got a fifth in the first moto of this particular meeting. So Ferry right now in fourth. And that would mean it would be his best day of the season. Coming at the right time worst possible timing for Tortelli but you got to earn it and Tortelli right now he made his mistakes had his injuries it's all part of racing and Ferry right now is riding excellent and deserves that position Tortelli coming into Troy has three second places and a win in the last four races but he's had his problems here today there's no question about it and, and not only today but will this ankle be a big problem in the following race at Washougal and then Millville. Sometimes if it's not a broken bone, it can take longer to heal. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I've had plenty of ankle injuries during my career. And I never missed a race, but I rode in a lot of pain. And I, I'm sure Tortelli can do the same thing. You don't want to have to do it, but when you're going after a title, that's what it takes. Ferry checking his position out, looking back to see where Sebastian was. Let's go to Davey. Jerry, good battle between Tim and Sebastian for fourth spot. I got to tell you, this is the best we've seen Tim ride this summer. He's had a few good races. We're just, if he 
he's his own worst enemy with starts. If he just get a better start, he can probably run up there with these guys for a while. He gets in that gap, and that's that gap we have a hard time filling every weekend after weekend. So, and he knows it, so we're working as hard as we can to try to fill it. Right now, Tortelli's putting a lot of pressure on. Do you think he'll, he'll treat Tortelli differently because he was the points leader in contention for the race, or is this no holds, no holds barred motocross? Uh, this is a no holds barred deal, you know. Everybody's out here to make a living, and so is Timmy. So I'm sure Tortelli would do the same if we were in the same position. Well, Tortelli hasn't given up yet. Look out, Sebastian's on the roll right now. Tim Ferry can't hold on to it. Tortelli with a very significant pass into Foy. This is a gutsy ride. You know the guy's ride in pain. Imagine when you just go to step on your foot. A sharp pain shoots all through it and up your leg, okay? And he's out there racing like that. In the span of six seasons, Jeff Stanton and his mechanic, Dan Bentley, put together an impressive resume. Well, we won uh, three or six national championships, three Supercross, three national, uh, 89, 90, and 92. With all those titles and race wins, it wasn't all good times in the Honda pits. I believe there has to be bad times in order to have that many race wins and that many championships. If everything's great all the time, um, I feel that's not a, not a good thing. You know, Dan disciplined me. And that's what a, you know, a rider needs, needs to hear that. They can't always hear that things, things are great. You've got to have as much discipline as you do praise. And uh, Dan, Dan knew how to push that and get that out of me, which was outstanding. This dynamic duel complemented one another perfectly. They came together only by the luck granted by the motorcycle gods. I was lucky enough to get hooked up with Jeff by chance, didn't know him. Uh, because of the past, my past experience, Dave Arnold put me with Jeff, and I flew to Paris, met Jeff for the first time, and things just started to click, and it worked out great. I was very, very fortunate to get hooked up with him. Today, Stanton and Bentley work behind the scenes for Team Honda, and as Jeff looks back on his racing days, he wishes he took more time to appreciate it. And if you look back on it, I, I, I guess I would say that I wished I would have enjoyed it a little more than I did, but I was that way. I was so serious, and, and Dan was the same, you know, very serious and, uh, you know, stuck right to his schedule on working on the bikes and putting in the effort that they had to put in to win those races and championships. So if you look back on it, you probably wish you would have enjoyed it a little bit more, but uh, after it's all said and done, you know, like you say, the race wins and the championships, you had that to look back on. So it was an outstanding career for both of us. Well, thanks to their no-nonsense approach, Jeff Stanton and Dan Bentley provided race fans with some great memories. Boy, that was truly an exciting moment to, to view with uh, Stanton coming back, taking that title right out of the hands of, of Bradshaw. Right now, we've got a terrific... Oh, they're rubbing plastic right now. Tim Ferry coming up, giving a little touch to Sebastian Tortelli. Gives a little more than a touch. Kind of forces him off the track right there. Ferry is really digging. It's contract time for Timmy. I'll tell you what, Tortelli probably thought he had that already just handled. He thinks, okay, I got this guy back. Maybe he'll finally leave me alone. Now Ferry fights back, riding the best moto of the season so far, and Raynard's next. So Tortelli is having a tough time of it. And Jerry with a good smile on his face. Confident his rider will stay there. Raynard is coming up in back of Tortelli now. So and Tortelli in fifth, Raynard in sixth, David. Don't be fooled by the posture of Raynard. A lot of times it looks like he doesn't even really try that hard, but he is, and Tortelli gets him back. Incredible battle as we see Ferry and Sebastian Tortelli just going back and forth at it. Tortelli, of course, trying to recapture as many points as possible with Ricky Carmichael still out in front. We'll return in a moment. The Chevy Trucks AMA Motocross Series is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Honda, the company that defines performance on two wheels. Performance first. And by Suzuki, makers of innovative motorcycles and ATVs. Well, it's been a fascinating session here at Troy, Ohio, at Kenworthy's Farm. As Ricky Carmichael is looking more and more like it's going to be a sweep for him. It'll be his third sweep on the season. And for Carmichael, then... It would be his fifth victory overall and ninth moto win. That's incredible. Pretty dominant. 
And you know, he's, he's been feeling pretty, it's a mindset. It's completely in the head when you get this good and you know, the top four guys can all ride about the same. Ricky doesn't believe in himself as much indoors as he does outdoors. And here's the difference. Carmichael, overwhelmingly the lap leader of the season. And if he finishes out this race, it looks like he will have led about 30 laps today. And he's got time now to acknowledge the fans that are cheering him along the way. Just a few more corners and he'll have that sweep. Boy, what a boost in the points. He, Plus, he'll have that big points lead, yes. Yeah, like you said, can Tortelli come back to the next round healthy? I don't think so. He's probably going to be about 80 or 90% at best. Well, RC should win the championship. He would get into that exclusive club of only six riders to win a 125 national title and a 250 national title. Hannah, Ward, Kodrowski, Emig, and Henry. Boy, those are some big names to put RC next to, huh? He deserves it. And it's a fact that only Jeff Ward has come off a 125 title and won a 250 title the next year, of which he would duplicate. The checkers for Ricky Carmichael. Kevin Windham taking a second place, and Mike LaRocco holding on to that third. So you had two Hondas in front of Tortelli, who was battling the ankle injury. Let's go down and hear the wise words. Well, Ricky, after last week's win at Unadilla, you said you wanted to come to Kenworthy and go 1-1. You did just that, and then you got the benefit of an injury to Tortelli. You finished fourth. You got an eight-point lead. Oh, it feels good to be back in the points. I tell you, Kawasaki, Chevy trucks, British on tires have been hooking up excellent on the starts. Uh, you know, that's the key to this championship, to get out away from all the chaos in the back section, or in the, in the middle of the pack and the start, and uh, been getting killer starts. And, uh, you know, I felt good. Kevin was on my tail all day for the, you know, first half of the race, keeping me honest. And uh, I gapped in both motos and was able to ride my, my own race. I tell you, uh, my bike was working awesome that moto. Uh, I felt good. It was a fun moto. Well, as I said, your title rival, Tortelli, had some problems. He got fourth in this moto. He's going to spend the week working on an ankle. You get to get ready for Washugal. Yeah, I'm going to get ready for Washugal. I won my first title at Washugal, and uh, that's going to give me some confidence. And, uh, you know, Washugal and Millville and, and Steel City are my three favorite tracks, and uh, I'm going to put it, try to put the hammer down. Well, one other short milestone I want to mention to you. Today was your 30th national win. Not bad for a guy that's been riding for three and a half years. No, I tell you, that's excellent, man. Uh, been working hard oh, to all my sponsors, you know, Kawasaki, Chevy Trucks, Bridgestone, Oakley, Fox. Uh, you know, everyone that I forgot, thank you. Uh, my mom and dad, my trainer, Eldon Baker, uh, and Johnny O. Thank you. A great performance by Ricky Carmichael. Kevin Windham getting his third, second place performance of the season. Mike LaRocco, his very first podium. Let's go back to Davey now. Well, Kevin, you put together two good motos here, but what can you say about Carmichael and those starts? Well, he's just on the gas, and, uh, you know, he breaks out so fast, and uh, I try to stay with him, and uh, I just wasn't able to do it today. So he had some good lines. I was able to pick up on some of them, and, and uh, just couldn't get it done today, but, but my bike was working great, and uh, we've got four races left. Those four races, those tracks, I know that you've been riding them since 1994. Can you get a win or two before the season ends? Well, I certainly, I certainly hope so. Uh, I've been working hard and uh, a little disappointed so far. You know, I just need to pick it up here at the end and uh, you know finish the season off strong. So Ricky Carmichael now takes an eight-point lead on Sebastian Tortelli as their rivalry continues. Kevin Windham not that far off, but Villeman and Larocco slipping from contention. Ricky Carmichael now 